provided evidence that the Thai military were towing refugees out to sea. Our sources stressed they did give these men food and water. The Thailand's Prime Minister, who recently came to power, says the practice is wrong and the government is investigating. I believe that uh, at times when there is, as I said, a lot of pressure in terms of the numbers of these people coming in, uh, there are attempts, I think, to try uh, to let these people drift to, uh, to other shores. Uh, I have asked um, whether people are aware of such practices. Um, the one thing that is clear is that uh, when these practices do occur, it is done on the understanding that there is enough food and water supplied. But I was still concerned about what happened to the men in these photos. We'd been told they were towed out to sea on the 19th of January, but they hadn't been seen since. But then we got news of a boatload of Rohingya who'd come ashore in Indonesia, hundreds of kilometers to the south of Thailand. Could this be the same boat in the photos we've been given? We traveled to the Indonesian port of Idi, where we were told a fishing boat had found a group of half-starved Rohingya drifting in a boat far out to sea. And this was the boat they arrived in. It looked exactly the same as the one in the photos, even down to the distinctive planking on the side. We found some of the Rohingya men in the local hospital. They were covered in scars and claimed they were beaten while being detained by the Thai authorities, who, according to them, finally towed them out to sea and cut them adrift. The Thai Prime Minister insists there was no abuse meted out by Thai forces, but when I showed the Rohingya the photos, they recognized the beach on Koh Sai Deng, the island where they'd been detained. Their accounts were confusing. Different men gave different dates, different numbers of Rohingya on their boat. But all the men we spoke to claimed they'd been beaten in Thailand and all indicated they'd been towed back out to sea. Rahmat Ullah spoke Malay and appeared to be a sort of leader of the group. He claimed 22 men on the boat died. No engine, no water, no food. He told me their situation was desperate. Somehow, he fell overboard but was rescued by a fisherman. He says, I'm very grateful. If it weren't for him, I thought I would die in the sea. Muzakir is the fisherman who found him, by chance, a hundred kilometers out to sea. He says, when I first spotted him, I didn't think it was a person. I thought it was a fish or some sort of rubbish. <laughs> Ramat was so grateful because Musakir not only saved him, but also found the refugees' boat and towed them all to shore. <laughs> Rahmat, like the others, knows they almost never made it. But after we left, an aid worker who works with the Rohingya showed us evidence that suggests Rahmat may have been more than just a leader of this group. The aid worker, who declined to go on camera for fear of being unable to return to Myanmar, claimed several Rohingya recognized Rahmat's photo and insisted he organized their escape by boat, that he was part of a group of people smugglers who charged these men hundreds of dollars to escape Myanmar. <laughs> Rahmat says he has no connection to people smugglers, he was just seeking a better life. But Indonesian investigators are looking into who organized the boat. The Indonesian foreign minister says there's a strong assumption that these men are victims of people smuggling. The UN's refugee agency confirmed many Rohingya are persuaded to board boats by unscrupulous people smugglers. There are actually brokers who go around soliciting uh, for people to get on these boats. And the brokers paint, you know, wonderful pictures of life in Malaysia because Malaysia is where they're usually trying to get to. They paint wonderful pictures of how life is in Malaysia. You can go there, you can work, you can earn money, send money home to your family. And a lot of people fall for it because they're just so desperate. But all too often, the boats the smugglers use are ill-equipped for long voyages. This footage, taken by the Indian Coast Guard, shows what appears to be a group of Rohingya being rescued off the coast of the Andaman Islands. These refugees, like other groups, also claim they've been abandoned by the Thai military. The condition of those men on that boat, who had been at sea for about two weeks, was truly horrific. You know, these, these men were in... Um, they were skeletal, you know, their boat was on the verge of sinking, it was filled with um, 
you know, human waste and seawater up to their up to their hips. You know, I mean, the, that that someone would put someone in at risk of, of, of that sort of that, that sort of treatment is, you know, a regard belief. With such terrible risks faced at sea, I wondered why the Rohingya kept taking these boats. Surely word must have spread that these journeys were simply too dangerous.